I'll let you know that. Okay. You can hear me all right, right? Okay, we're live. All right. Let me just make sure it's public. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, Facebook. We are live, and I have my special guest here with me. And okay. Welcome to the Know or Never podcast. Uh, this is a conversation today, and I welcome you to my platform. And I have a special guest, special, special, special guest, Erica Etienne. I said it right, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she is the person that I have been promoting for this whole past week. And I want to just uh, say thank you first for being on here tonight because I know we have busy schedules. You're a mom, you're a leader, you're, you work, you do all these things. You homeschool and you have kids in public school. And so you have a lot to do. So I thank you for being on here with me um, and sharing your expertise with our audience. So if you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself and you know why we have you on? Sure. So my name is Erica Etienne. I am uh, all the things that you said, Miss Kristen. Uh, but uh, first, let me say thank you for having <laughs> me and allowing me to join in on a conversation and topic that I am very passionate about, which is emotional intelligence. Uh, so by day, yes. I lead um, our workforce engagement and development team, and I am certified in emotional intelligence, meaning I can administer the assessment as well as debrief and coach people uh, in developing their uh, soft skills in that area. Uh, and then also, you know, on the other side of things, I'm ministering the gospel and sharing God's good news. So yes, that's yes. it in a nutshell. And, I, and I've had the opportunity to, to glean from Erica and go to actual the continent of Africa. This is who I went with. She was our leader and it was an amazing time. And yeah, we we had fun. So um, this conversation tonight is not about Africa though. It's about emotionally equipped, soft skills for career and entrepreneurial success. Um, and she'll kind of answer more so, so uh, it could be on the career side. Uh, because I know a lot of people are searching for jobs or they're transitioning into new careers. And this might be an entity um, that they have not thought of or, you know, you just don't hear it in conversation. So I wanted to bring it to my platform um, so people can, you know, know what what this is. So if uh, you would like to share with us how you got certified, because that is you know, amazing. And I think more people probably need to step into that realm. But what what made you get certified? Yeah, so I think just in the nature of the work that I do and the amount of people that I'm I'm providing career advice and uh, coaching them anyway, right? And mm -hmm. um, have over the years throughout my career in different facets and different ways. And it's something that just kind of came along with the job. So by trade, I, I'm an HR professional and I've worked in all different disciplines, but I have found my niche and my excitement um, in this particular area of development, right? And so uh, although we were teaching and talking about these topics, I am also a little bit of a <clears throat> nerd. So I wanted to know why people do the things they do, how they think, and the numbers uh, and scales entice me right so um i yeah, went yeah through, so there is certification training that you can get where you learn how to use the 
the emotional intelligence assessment, the tool to help people, um, you know, just improve in those uh, particular areas. So emotional intelligence is about just what it sounds like, your emotional and your social skills. And it influences the way that we perceive things, it perceive things, it influences the way we express ourselves. Um, it's how we develop and maintain our relationships, how we cope with challenges. And we use that uh, information in an effective way and in a meaningful way. And so it wasn't enough, you know, reading books and you can do all the research, you can take classes, but I wanted to really be able to target key behaviors to help people. So, and yes, you have to take a uh -oh. test and you have to pass it. <laughs> yes, you have to pass. You have to pass. You can't just be out here, you know. Um, this is why I have her on because I don't want to just think people to think that I'm certified or, you know, giving faulty advice. I love that I'm connected to people that are in this sphere because it again, I don't hear about it enough. Um, and so I didn't I don't hear about it a lot as an impact on the workplace. So can you describe like how it helps or benefits you within the workplace? Uh, with your coworkers or manager? Absolutely. So let, let's just say this. There's five kind of core areas that emotional intelligence taps into. It's your self-perception, your self-expression, your interpersonal skills, your decision-making, and your stress management. And I think if we all just think of ourselves in the work environment, those are five key areas that come up. And so even within those five key areas, there are 15 like subcomponents that are connected to each and every one of those that actually will um, impact our overall uh, well-being, our, our personal you know, health and our performance and all of that. So let's see, um, in the workplace, Let's, let's kind of work our way up. As a brand new employee coming in a door into a new field or just in a new company, you not understanding those just five broader areas about yourself can impact you greatly. Um, you go into an environment, let's just say it's super fast paced. And so you have to make a lot of quick decisions, but maybe you're someone who um, finds it stressful to make decisions very quickly and you, and you might struggle, you know, if you're challenged or something and, and asked to deliver fast. Well, if you are emotional, emotionally intelligent, you will have other skills that will balance that out. So when you're in a situation where this decision making is necessary, but not necessarily as high for you, how do you balance that out with your strengths, right? What types of things can you do um, to develop your problem solving skills or to develop your um, like reality testing. These are all this kind of sub areas that fall in there or your impulse control. Maybe you make decisions too quickly uh, and maybe they're inaccurate. But it's about self-awareness and knowing those things about yourself so that you can navigate your environment. Going up the ladder, you think as a leader, you're not uh, as empathetic, right? So how... How do me, being someone who, who doesn't lead by emotion and who, who isn't swayed by emotion either, um, but I have a, a highly sensitive employee on my team, how, how do I balance that with my other skills so that I can uh, be empathetic to that employee instead of everybody hates, you know, Kristen because she's insensitive and she doesn't care about anybody. It's not true. She probably does. It's just not, just not the thing that she leads with. So um, when you know more about yourself, you work better amongst others, right? Because you're self-aware. Right. right. And I kind of, now thinking back when we went to uh, Africa, you knew who to give certain tasks to and who yeah. not to. Like mm -hmm. we were all <laughs> working in our strengths, but you also forewarned us that we may have to do something outside of our comfort zone um, so that there was a balance. So I, I remember that uh, very well outside of work. But what is the difference between, okay, emotional intelligence and then the traditional intelligence that we hear more about? Like, what is the difference per se? Is it more of the within? 
for the emotional intelligence or how do you how do you describe that? Yeah, this again, it's your self, it's your self-awareness, right? Because so you can be intelligent, you might be smart, you might be wise, right? But how do you then take that wisdom? and translate mm -hmm. that into various scenarios and various right. circumstances that you encounter because we do have personalities, experiences, and things that drive um, and contribute to who we are and how we show up. Um, so mm -hmm. how you perceive things, right? If you grew up in a household where um, people are condescending and talk down to you or what have you, right? Your self-regard might be challenged, right? Or you might be very um, protective or you might be extremely defensive, right? So knowing that about yourself, um, again, you might have wisdom. Now we wanna apply that wisdom to how I perceive things. So is this circumstance really the way I looked at it or am I filtering that through my wounds, right? Or things that have hurt me. Right. So they have to kind of use, tap into that wisdom so you can, kind of deal with that perception. Ask yourself questions so that you can, this is where the balancing comes in, right? So my self-perception might be off, but maybe my ability to um, test the reality of a circumstance is high. And that's where your, your wisdom would come in, is that now I can kind of use that strength for that area that I'm weak. That, that's good because I'm I'm writing notes. If y'all don't have y'all notebook out, I'm, <laughs> I have mine. So I'm making sure I have this for later. And if you have any questions, you can just type them in here um, while we're talking. Uh, but I do think people need to know the difference because, um, again, you might not hear, you might not have ever heard of emotional intelligence. Like this is new. Soft skills is new um, mm -hmm. in that context because you might be operating in soft skills you just don't know exactly what you're operating in um and that all has to do with knowing yourself so that's the key that's a key point right there know yourself um yeah. so discuss emotional intelligence when it comes to career growth because the hot topic right now is there's a lot of people that want to climb the ladder find new things that they could do career-wise. Um, they might have left a career and went to a whole different space area. How does that benefit your career growth when you're um, trying to succeed in a workplace? Well, I think it's, it's pretty critical, right? So if you know uh, more about yourself and you can kind of figure out what the... Um, excuse me, what the organization needs, right? Then how how does the totality of who you are contribute to, you know, their bottom line? So in my experience, a lot of people want to come in at the top, right? They want to come in uh, brand new or with little experience and they want to lead, right? <laughs> they think, hey, my way, I can do it better. Um, and that's fine. Have your aspirations. I, I used to feel like that too, especially when we have bad managers. Like when I have that seat, I'm not going to do it like them. I'm going to be better. Right. Um, yeah. and then, then you get in the seat and I'm like, oh, I'll go back and just not, <laughs> you know, not do this. Right. But, um, here's how, it, here's how, it, how it affects you in kind of growing in leadership. For me, for example, on my team, I have various personalities of people. I have to really pay attention to who I'm dealing with uh, on my team. Um, what what are their strengths? What are their the areas where they need my support? Where where does my personality and who I am uh, collide with who they are? Right, both positively mm -hmm. and negatively. And I think that you have mm -hmm. to first kind of assess the environment that you're in. And so as you want to lead, think about the team you will be leading. Get to know those people as peers. How do you work with them just as colleagues and then how, as colleagues? And then how are you going to go from peer to leader? Uh, because that is a big transition. And if you bump heads as, as colleagues and then you come in and you think, yeah, I won, right? Now I'm the boss. Well, do you want a healthy team or do you want to rule with an iron fist? Ruling with the iron fist right. probably will not get you the results that you want. 
So where emotional mm -hmm. intelligence comes in is you would be building those relationships, right? Building, um, tapping into how you, um, being self-aware of your things, your isms and what have you. Um, if you if you take an assessment, you're looking at those subscales and saying, okay, what areas do I need to develop in and to work at so that I can be a good leader? Um, because you're a team that you're going to lead is going to be full of people who are not like you, who don't think like you, who don't do the work the way you would do it. Um, and so the more self-awareness you have, the better leader uh, you can be. So what what uh, direction would you point people in if, say, they don't know themselves or they haven't really done the work to know what their strengths or weaknesses are? Are there um, any practices that you suggest or any kind of preparation before they walk into, you know, these situations with work or a new job or applications? Yeah. <clears throat> so here's. Here's a very simple and free thing you can do is ask your for, ask people you trust in terms of their feedback, uh, who you'll be receptive to hearing um, the truth about you. You could ask a former colleague if you guys have a relationship, what's it like to work with me, right? What's it like to work with me when things are stressful? What's it like to work with me when things are going well? Um, where do you see, you know, um, points of resistance when working with me? Where, where do you see me at my best? And you ask those few questions to a few people because you might think you're doing fantastic and you very well might be, but they can then highlight for you what it's like on the other side, watching and observing you uh, and highlight your strengths as well as opportunities for you to develop more skills. Um, and the reason you wanna uh, really, really tap into the soft skills is because you might be technically smart, right? I've worked with engineers, I've worked with uh, economists, you name it. Books technically very great at what they do can manage mm -hmm. the work, but people management is a very different set of skills. And so how you work with people, how you relate to others um, and, and that interpersonal softer side matters. And the beauty about intellig emotional intelligence, like I um, mentioned, there's five composite areas they all feed into each other right there's not one area yep. that matters where another one doesn't all of those things matter for your overall well-being to develop your emotional and your uh, social functioning they you need all of those pieces uh working together yeah that's good so ask everybody ask your friends or Ex coworkers, someone that you work with on a project, what was my strengths? What did you feel I could fix or work on? Um, because communication is also a soft skill. Uh, creativity is a soft skill. So this is why we're on tonight because Erica is an expert in that. She leads a team. Um, and then outside of work, she's led teams and done things and she has a retreat coming up. She has to lead a team on that. So this is her her life work. Like this is this is legit. So um about entrepreneurship, because we do have that in the title as well. Uh what what would you say to the budding entrepreneurs uh that are either Season entrepreneurs, because sometimes when you're in business for a long time, that doesn't mean that you have perfected this. Um, it doesn't mean that you have actually took a look at your emotional intelligence. You're kind of just grinding, hustling, and you may now want to slow down and add this entity. Uh, what would you say is the difference in entrepreneurship versus like corporate or in the office? when it comes to emotional intelligence? So I, I'm going to speak from my experience. In the workplace, I mean, I, I would like to think I am who I am no matter where I am, right? Um, in the workplace, these relationships are far distance. I see you for my work hours and I'm out. Um, mm -hmm. Budding entrepreneurs and small business, the core of your business is on relationship. Whether you're building relationships with people in proximity to you in the local community or online. 
online or what have you. Um, the people are buying and supporting your business because they know you, they like you, and they trust you. And so if you are not self-aware, you will damage relationships and you'll have a hard time establishing your customer base, no matter what that looks like. Um, you know, customers, they're, un, you know, you, you have a cute product that you showed online, they get it, it doesn't meet their expectations, you snap at them, you're rude in the email, you don't respond, uh, or you take offense um, because this is your blood, sweat, and tears, and it costs you all your, you know, all your money to make this one thing, and they don't mm -hmm. like it, right? And yeah. so if you're not self-aware, you might quit. You might throw your hands up because you feel like, you know, I can't, I can't take the pressure. Right. Um, so I think for entrepreneurs, soft skills are extremely, extremely critical um, because of, especially because of that um, relationship. But it's also about your overall well-being. Right. Knowing, knowing you so that when you get in these circumstances, how do I react? How do I respond? And how do I cope so I can keep going? Because quite frankly, entrepreneurship is hard, right? And so um, I think it's I think it's even more important um, because these people are going to be your bread and butter that you're interacting with. So you got to know you. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, that leads to the next question, actually. Okay. Uh, overcoming challenges. So do you want to highlight common emotional challenges for entrepreneurs or yourself with within entrepreneurship that you um, have noticed throughout the years? Yeah, let's see. Um, you could do both workplace and entrepreneurship. You said overcoming challenges, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Let's let's look let's go back to decision making, right? So you might have somebody um who acts rash, right? Who who acts rash or um they struggle with being objective in, in a given situation. Because that can happen to you in corporate or in in entrepreneurship. But if you have strength in that area and decision making. If you're emotionally intelligent in there, you can remain calm under pressure. Uh, you can separate um, facts from emotion, right? So emotionally, mm -hmm. I might be angry or frustrated, but the fact of the matter is I have to get this done, right? And this decision has to be made. Um, they are more inclined not to be impulsive or, um, you know, they're a little more methodical in their approach. And so I think that when you encounter challenges or those who encounter, encounter challenges in either either area, uh, strengthening your emotional intelligence allows you to bridge up, right? So maybe that's how you were, but now that I'm aware, I can work on it so that when I am in a stressful situation, or I, am, or I do have to make a, a quick decision um, I am more strategic about how I do. Okay. Um, and that, and that's really what I looked over when I was looking into this, um, part of what I'm supposed to do as entrepreneurship. Me personally, I was like, okay, you have to be more strategic and you have to leave the emotional, emotional side of you out with the decision-making. You just, I mean, when I say that, I mean, in context, like if I am upset that day, it might have been something totally different outside of my business. And mm -hmm. if I have to make a decision in my business, I can't come to the table with that. I have to really yeah. get sober minded and know what direction I'm going in before, you know, making a detrimental decision. Um and I think so many people are, are maybe struggling with that now because they don't know, you know, that they're doing this. They're not aware mm -hmm. of it. Um, so how do you separate the two uh, where you're realizing you're emotional? Like what, what practices do you do or what practices do you give your team to kind of take a step back and say, okay, yeah. before you make this decision... What do you say to that? 
Yeah, so that's a, this is actually a good one because I'm someone who is not led by emotion, right? So I've had to work mm -hmm. on, you know, improving that empathy piece so that I can acknowledge and, and accept that there's an emotion behind it. So if I'm upset, that has no bearing on what I'm going to do. That that goes in its little mm -hmm. box. I sit it down. I do what I got to do, and I'll deal. I'll pick the emotion up later. Um, but I have, right. for example, people on my team um, who are or that I've worked with who are more emotional, right? And so they're looking for some acknowledgement about that, or I make a decision, and they're in their feelings about it. And the you know I was also in the in the military. <clears throat> um, back in the day, yeah. so yes, so I'm also was. like, got that part. <laughs> so I'm yeah. also like, it is what it is. We got to keep it moving. Get up, you'll cry. Yeah. Get up. Here's a tissue. Let's go. Right. Um, but yeah. being now not no longer in the military and working, you know, with people from different environments, I've had to say, okay, let me tell me how you. This is what we have to do. Tell me how you feel about it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Is the is are their feelings going to sway what needs to be done? No. Um, if it's a decision that I think will have a heavy impact on their emotions, and I talked to them about it before, right? Hey, let me tell you something. I'm thinking, if I can, it's not always that cut and dry and easy. But if it's something that right. I can, there's room to make adjustments. I'll take the team's input and in consideration before making it because I do care about their feelings, right? And then if yeah. their feelings don't align to what we need to do, then I say, you know what? I hear you. Here's what we have to do. Let me know how I can support you through the change. Right. Um, and that is, yeah. that is something that I think you have to be willing to do because a lot of leaders will just make a decision, not care how you feel, right. not follow up and not support you through a transition. Um, and even if you're on the other side and you're that employee, I think you also yeah. have to be self-aware to say, you know what, I'm really in my feelings about this, but how can I um, find some good ways to navigate this solution? I mean, if it's not hurting you ethically or morally, then what can you do um, to really push through, even though the decision isn't what you want? Yeah, and and what do you say to those people, to those people that don't feel like they have the support um, whether it's in entrepreneurship or on their job, maybe they, they're a person that doesn't feel like this place of work is for them or, but they have to stay. Um, it's not an option to kind of leave and, you know, you have to provide for your family or, you know, yourself, put a roof over your head. What do you say to those people um, that are in that space that don't have support uh, for what they do? when it comes to emotional intelligence or even learning it, you know, cause after tonight or a replay, they might look at this and want to start working on that. Um, and they just don't know where to start because they don't have the support. Gotcha. So no, no one can take your personal time. So I would say educate yourself around this topic. There's plenty of Ted talks, YouTube videos here. We are recording one um, to, mm -hmm. you know, kind of uh, expose yourself to this topic. And if you can connect with career advisors, I would say do it, you know, whether there's one in your um, current place of work or someone you can connect with online or social media space to maybe help you see what you don't see. Um, if you're in a toxic work environment or you feel like you just don't have the support, I would say, um, and I've had this conversation with many people, I say, why are you here? What makes you, mm. besides the paycheck, besides, you know, what you just expressed, I got to put food on the table. Why do you, why else do you do this work? Even if it wasn't, right. here, why do you do this work? Um, to mm -hmm. help them reconnect to their passion. Cause I'm like, you might not like the people, uh, you don't, might not like the place that you do the work, but do you enjoy this work absent the people? Okay. So let's, let's focus on that. Right. Um, and try to, I really try to help them find the good um in what they're doing and not allow the outside environment to steal you know their joy and their passion for the actual work that they do so that means even if no one says thank you even if you never get that bonus or recognition for this work you yes. enjoy the work so let's stay there you know let's let's yes. redirect our thoughts yeah 
That's good. That's really good. So I hope you all got that. And if you got it on the replay, just keep replaying it every time you think of, I don't see poor or I don't, you, you know, you have to, you know, be an adult about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the next thing, because I don't want to have Erica on here all night because we can chat all night. Yeah. But I think you all are getting some needy responses so that you can take this away and, you know, show up in your real life and practice what we've already talked about. Um, and if you have any questions, again, uh, you can put them below. Everybody's saying it's good, Erica. So oh. uh, they, don't have, <laughs> they don't have no questions yet. Um, so I I, I would like to ask you to identify some essential soft skills because we've been bringing that word or that term up. Mm -hmm. You want to break down briefly what soft skills are outside of emotional intelligence because that is a soft skill, but there mm -hmm. are a plethora of other soft skills that yeah. could be beneficial for your like career or business success. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk with, about the number one, communication, having good, effective communication skills. All right, so no one yes. cares about your attitudes or clapbacks. Your, you have to be know how to be savvy in your communication uh, in the workplace, even outside of the workplace. Communication is everything. It is the number one thing I tell my team. I say, let's keep the lines of communication open. If I make you mad, tell me because I can't fix it if you don't tell me. <clears throat> if something went well, that's awesome. Uh, you have a problem. I don't care what the problem is. And you, if there's something I can do, we have to talk. The, <clears throat> when the lines of communication are closed, you know, things become challenging. Uh, learning how to communicate up, through, and down your chain, whatever that looks like for you and your um agency know who your or your company know who you're talking to know your audience you know and tailor your skills um accordingly agility and adaptability okay so those those two things mm -hmm. are how do you <clears throat> how do you adapt to given environments and change and circumstances and how do you move that's the agility how do you move and adapt because um things are ever changing the world is ever changing things are evolving and if you are stuck and you and you are resistant to change, you're always going to have a hard time in the workplace. Um, problem solving skills is another one of my uh, big ones. OK, do not come in my office saying there's a problem. And then that's all you say. You got a problem. I need to hear a solution. You know, otherwise, I don't care because is the building going right. to fall apart or people, is something detrimental going to happen. OK, no. So problems. They need a fix, right? And your leaders do not want to be the ones having to tell you how to fix it. You stand out when you not only identify a problem, but you have a way to fix it. And so uh, that matters. Teamwork, collaboration, or other soft skills. How well do you work with others? How well do you build relationships? Meaningful, effective, um, beyond the water cooler relationships. Um, I can go on and on. Time management, well, conflict resolution. <laughs> uh, time management. Because I don't hear it. Yeah. Okay. So time management. Yeah. You know what are you doing with the hours you get paid for? Um, how do you resolve conflict? And it doesn't have to be conflict just with people, but conflict with processes, com conflict with systems, what have you. What are your conflict resolution skills? Um, creativity. Are you innovative? Uh, do you have new ideas? Do you know how to research new ideas and bring those things to the table um, in a way? Can you think critically? Lord have mercy. Can you no. think outside of the box? Can you think Can you think beyond what's on the surface? Can you analyze something not for the sake of questioning, just to question and undermine, but can you yeah. question to a point of solution, right? Um, can you unpack something uh, that matters? Do you have integrity? Do you do the right thing when no one is looking? Um, I think integrity so is good. very important. Um, what else? Can you, are you organized? <laughs> Even if your organi organization skills are different than mine, you know, are they, are you organized? Are you dependable? You know, these reliable 
Um, yeah, are you patient? Uh, let's see, empathy. I mentioned that quite a bit. And, and so yeah. that stuff, you know, is all roped in and inherent with, um, you know, emotional intelligence and your interpersonal yeah. skills in general, interpersonal mm -hmm. skills matter. Um, mm -hmm. Can you analyze? Are you curious? You know, it depends on the work that you're doing, but right. those are all things that come to mind. These can all go with entrepreneurship too, y'all. So both sides, if you're working a job or in a career, or if you're in an entrepreneurship uh, realm, you still need it. So mm -hmm. um, don't feel like you're exempt because you, you know, you got your own thing going on. And it's like, no, like she said, you have to build relationships more mm -hmm. in entrepreneurship than anything. So if you don't know how to communicate effectively for your small business, then, you know, you might want to start over <clears throat> and, yeah. and approach it in a different way. Um, yeah. yeah, so do you want to talk more about the pre, um, maybe a website they could take, uh, uh, an assessment, or how do they get to that point? Does a job give it to them or explain that for to take it for them? Yeah, so personal. For, yeah. Um I'm I have to be mindful not to promote certain tools <laughs> because of who, right. who licensed me, right? But right. I will say this. Yes, you can Google. There are full, there are free emotional intelligence um assessments out there that can give you, you know, some basic information. It's not going to be the, you know, kind of licensed registered model as detailed, but right. you could, it's a starting point. Um, yes. If you want to dive in and take a more formal assessment, then you would get with a, a, somebody who's certified, a coach, and they can give you the assessment and, uh, you know, read out, work with you um, to build up mm -hmm. um, an action plan and as well as walk you through some more, you know, tailored suggestions. Um, but Google can give you free ones. Um, any type of career development coach you can find, um, LinkedIn mm -hmm. is a great place to search. Here we are talking about it. Um, so yeah. there's various, um, various tools out there, but yeah, there's so much value in yeah. taking one. Um, I'm a, I ha I'm a nerd for these things. So I'm, you know, I also certified in DISC and so we do this, yeah. DISC leverages, um, you know, focus on your personality and your style as well. <clears throat> um, also okay. taps a little bit into um, your style and how it is really about the workplace, um, whereas emotional intelligence, it, you know, is beneficial all over. So. How has being certified changed your life? I have so much more understanding, you know, and, and you learn more the more you coach people through. I have so much more understanding. I'm probably hyper aware um, of, of myself and, and for the good and the bad, right? <laughs> so I'm probably hyper aware. But it makes for a fruitful conversation. It has uh, also helped me uh, to navigate my team dynamics, whether that's a team going on a mission trip, a team coming together for the retreat and the workplace. So uh, even amongst my family yeah. and having conversations and right. being to check about who I am when I have, you know, I have four little people. And so those <laughs> are four personalities. Four. <laughs> and four. so, you know, full plus, plus hubby. So, I mean, everybody requires yeah. something different. So I definitely have to be emotional mo emotionally intelligent or i will be wrecking havoc <laughs> if i was <laughs> and for girl for girls mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. he's, he's got that strength uh, <laughs> but do you it does anyone have any questions i can't tell uh yeah. i just want to give you all the opportunity before i let erica go um in the meantime do you have any advice for aspiring leaders uh that you know, would like to go into leadership. Not everyone like wants to. So I'm not saying 
you all have to be in leadership after this, but if they would like to, what would be your advice? Be self-aware. I think the worst leaders are just not self-aware. So if if this is, yeah. uh, if leadership is what you desire, I think you need to really hone in on understanding your emotional intelligence, um, your strengths, um, mm -hmm. and, and doing something about it. Even if you can't really figure out how, I also encourage all new leaders to get a coach, get a coach, get a coach, get a coach, because you're no longer the worker bee. And so you've got to learn mm -hmm. how to take those worker bee skills and um, become a, you know, a leader and ultimately a transformative leader. So you want, coaching is so beneficial uh, to your success if you can get with one. I think it's, I think it's so important. Yeah. Yeah. So you heard that. Get a coach. Get a coach to help you build within your success. Um, thank you, Erica. I, yes. I have her on because I did not mention yet. I am having a workshop about all of this. And, uh, you know, she reached out. She, uh, I was like, you know, she's certified. So I have to have her on um, to explain this in thorough and just uh, give the audience, you know, some fresh revelation because, you were, you know, sometimes we don't hear this stuff. <laughs> she has hearts. I don't know what. Um, they were for you. Sometimes. My <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a workshop coming. I actually changed the date. So I'm giving you all more time because I had something, a prior engagement. So it's November 12th. Now, uh, the link is in the uh, comment section, and I hope that you share that link with anyone that is looking to uh, dive more into their emotional intelligence. We're also going to go over soft skills briefly. You will not be taking an assessment. So like Erica directed us, we can Google a free one, but if you would like to hire someone to help you get more into detail with uh, what your strengths are, within that sphere, do so. Uh, but this workshop will just kind of kickstart you to, to that direction. Um, and I don't think anyone had any questions. Did you all enjoy this? They're saying that they did. So um, I think that's it. Well, but thank this you. will be uploaded on YouTube. Uh, my YouTube is Kristen Nicole Man. It will be uploaded so y'all can rewatch it over and over again. I really appreciate you, Erica, coming out of your busy schedule to help me and talk to my audience. Anything no else you would like problem. to add? No, thank <laughs> you for having me. I'm so I was so excited to see you talking about this. So excited that you're having a workshop yeah. and I'm here. Whatever. When you Erica need. So called thank me, you. I was like, "See, I take everything Erica does serious." So she's <laughs> like, <laughs> "It's like God talking." I'm like okay it's good so i yes. appreciate it <laughs> i love I it love i you. pray the workshop i love you too thank, thank you for you. having me okay well everybody we're gonna get off y'all have y'all go to bed get some rest thank you erica again and we will see you later